Hey, this is Tom of Junkie Excel. Um, welcome to the series, what instruments did I create for unique projects, unique instruments. Um, in this episode, I want to talk about um, the drums that were uniquely created um, for uh, Mad Max, <coughs> Fury Road. And I actually took the trouble to take all the drums that I have. I have um, six to eight drum kits. I have Serdos. I have uh, two pans, um, um, this world music drums. I've got all these different toms and uh, bass drums. And so we sampled every drum one by one meticulously um, to get the performance that I wanted to program my own drum rhythms. Besides that, we recorded a lot of drums live uh, on top of that. But, you know, when you write um, for picture and you're creating demos, it's great to have a really good sounding um, drum section. Um, I grew up with drums and it, it, I was a drummer when I was eight years old. And it's always been very important in all my music and also film scoring. Um, so let's um, dive right into it. Um, um, the um, instruments that we created uniquely for this um, for this uh, project, Mad Max, uh, we can see them here. We actually made a very sexy skin ourselves for um, the sampler uh, contact um, made by Native Instruments. That's the sampler that we build uh, all our instruments in. And um, so, you know, I'm just scrolling through the instruments here. We have. Uh, a few here um, and then we have more uh, over here and you know the list goes on and on and on literally there uh, there are hundreds of them and um, we had to keep it all organized and and we did so um, by going by type of uh, of uh, of drum um, so if we look at the arrange window and we see the MIDI tracks that actually corresponds to the contact instruments that we, that we just saw, um, I just want to give you an overview of uh, the instruments that we uh, created and how they sound. So I have a different philosophy when it comes to creating drum instruments and most of the drum libraries that are out there, most of the drum li libraries out there focus on two, three keys and then it works with velocity and the louder you play the keyboard, um, uh, the, the more tougher the drum sounds becomes, the louder it becomes. Um, and um, my philosophy is actually different. Um, I play the drum roughly 100 times, 120 times, and I try to be uh, as precise as I can, and I start as quiet as I can, and I go to as loud as I can. So let me play that example here. So we're if we look at the name, this is a 23-inch Serdo in its high tuning. So if I would play the keyboard, it would sound like this. So that's from very, very, very quiet to very, very loud on a Serdo. Now I'll tell you what the interesting thing about this is. If I were to program a rhythm, um, and let's just do something really quick. So I put the sequencer on, I put the click on, and I play. Now I hit retrospe uh, retrospect record, and we have this thing here that I just recorded. Uh, so let's open up the key edit, and let's just move this thing to a grid, like this. And then we use the right quantization level. Uh, let's just quantize this thing, and let's just play it in a cycle. So let's focus on this bit here. And then copy it one time over. Let's see this. 
So now, instead of working with the velocity, which have no impact or whatsoever, so I'm just making all the velocity the same at this point, I can just say, okay, I want it even quieter. So I'm just moving the notes down because I just explained the lower we go, the softer the velocity is, and the higher we go, the higher the velocity is. So if we move the notes down, and I make sure that one note never gets played twice, so you get all these different types of articulations that you know sound slightly different, you get a more natural uh, drum rhythm. So I'm just moving these randomly around in the lower, softer area. And I do the same thing with the, with the top notes. Now let's play this thing. Okay, so now I want to move the accent because I feel this should be louder than this. These get a little too hot here, so I'm just going to bring these down. Okay, so let's say we're happy with this rhythm. Let's see where we're happy. Um, then, by just transposing this thing up, I could very easily make sure that I maintain um, the combination, the relationship between the velocity, but I can go louder. And that's the interesting thing about working with, you know, not velocity for a louder sound, but with your key map. So if I now go up, so we play this thing in a cycle mode. So you hear that working with velocity, um, oh sorry, working with keynotes instead of velocity actually maintains the relationship of the rhythm way better. So we'll go back to rhythm programming later with the uh, Mad Max drums. So we just keep this part as it is and we're just going to mute it for now. Um, so we just heard the 23 inch Soto high tune and this is the medium tune. Now the 23 inch medium low tuning. You see they're, they're getting really beefy when you tune them lower. Yeah, that release is just fantastic. Um, now we go to the 22 inch Serto. Completely different character. So there are a bunch more Serdos and then I created this really interesting instrument that I played myself. I was positioning myself on four parts of the room with a drum kit, playing all these toms at the same time, but I would do it in four takes. So one take would be in the left corner of the room from very quiet to loud, then I would move the whole drum kit to the other corner, then I would move the whole drum kit to the other corner and then to the fourth corner doing the same thing over and over again. Now this instrument has a massive quality to it. You see, it's really, really beefy because you're hearing all these transients at the same time. Um, let's move on, I'm, you know, just picking some random instruments out of the 500 that we made. Um, bass drums. So these are bass drums not played, you know, with, with, with your foot when it comes to creating a rock kit or a bass drum to create a dance track. This is like, the bass drum is like up this high and, you know, you kneel in front of it almost like a taiko and you hit it with, with uh, sticks to create this sound. Um, this is a marching band. 
watching Ben drums. Now I sampled the complete marching band kit. I have a few of them and especially the high drums sound really, really interesting when they're very, you know, high in, 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 in energy. Or the 10 inch. Or the 12 inch. Now we're getting to drum kits, the Thai Yamaha drum. Another 10 inch of that drum kit. The list goes on and on and on and on. And eventually we get to an instrument that I really like, which is a two pan, which is, it doesn't sound that loud when you, when you actually play it live, but it has a really beefy quality to it with a lot of really nice low ends. Check that sound, I mean. That's a lower tuning. Um, well, let's go to the very low tuning, the 26 inch. And then we get two concert toms and then the list goes on and on. Um, but let's go back to a rhythm. So this is like a little preview of, of the sounds we uniquely made for, for Mad Max. Um, but let's go back to a very, very simple rhythm that we, that we, that we recorded. Um, so let's just say we make the first part really quiet and the second part as loud as we can. So that way, th this is different for every instrument. You gotta figure out what the highest note is that you played. So this is like, you know, this is fine. So now we're gonna copy this part to a next track. I'm gonna open this thing up and just see where the highest note of this instrument is. It's like, ah, we don't hear anything. So at this point, we're too high. We need to come down. Oh, there we go. Now we hear sounds. So that's in a high range. And then I'm just going to copy paste this over to the next drum. And let's do the same thing here. Let's see what the highest note is. Ah, we're too high. We're good now. Uh, let's go to the other, a fourth serdo. Let's see how high we are here. Ah, I don't hear it. Let's come down. Okay, so now we have four certos um, playing that same rhythm. So let's see how these four certos sound. Not bad at all. Um, now there's a really interesting trick that you can do with, with uh, Cubase. So we've selected 16th note quantizing. And just to make sure that this thing works, I'm going to freeze the quantize. And if I freeze the quantize, it will not go back to what I originally played. Um, so we, can, we won't have any weird mistakes. So I'm just going to freeze the quantize. We're at 16th notes. I'm just going to open up my dialog panel, the quantize dialog panel. And I'm going to say, let's just randomize these drums you know, um, among each other. Uh, so we just want to make sure 100% that, you know, that they're free, they're frozen in quantize. And we'll just set the ticks, uh, let's go to 14. And uh, let's quantize this. And we see all the notes shuffle, shuffle a little bit. And now let's play this thing again. Now it's getting interesting because now I hear four guys playing at the same time, but one guy, you know, his Indian food didn't sit well, so he's kind of messy and he's kind of a little late. So this sounds more, you know, interesting to me. So, but we're not done. We have, you know, hundreds of drum tracks. Let's just move on and see if we can get this thing even bigger. Um, so let's now, for instance, oh, go to these 16 inch toms that I really like, which is. They have this really nice character to them. So let's throw this thing here. Um, and then we'll do the, the randomized quantize later. So now I just want to make sure that I, I, I go back to the, to the full, full quantize and, and also freeze it. 
Um, and then I'm just going to go to the next 16 inch tom. Uh, or oh, this is a really nice two. This one too. Okay, so let's, let's now just play these toms without the surdos and let's see how that sounds. Ah, what I hear immediately is the, um, that the higher toms can go way higher, I think. So, up an octave, another octave, oh, another octave, there's some clams there. Now, now it gets interesting. Okay, so now let's look at the next tom and see how high we can go there. You see, we can go up almost two, three octaves there. Um, let's go here. And let's check here. Okay, let's now play this thing again. Just on their own, without the surdos. That starts to sound really good. But what I do want to do right now is exactly the same thing that we just did. So I'm just, with Control A, I'm just selecting, you know, all the notes. These are very low, very quiet. And then I'm just going to randomize these things. Let's do 12 on this one, quantize. And what we heard on these toms, what I did when I sampled them, is I, when I got to the point when they were so loud, I stopped playing the loud ones and then I started playing flams. So the toms will actually have a separate section really on the top that contain flams. So that would be very interesting to have them every, every now and then. So on the first one, for instance, Oh, there we have one. And on this one. We keep that one. And we keep that one. So let's now move on to the next. Oh, it's right there. Beautiful. And I always try to make sure that I select different notes every time so it doesn't sound repetitive. Let's play this thing again. We're just listening to toms. That sounds pretty good to me. Now, let's play this back with the other instruments. So now we're listening to four toms and four surdos. Sounds pretty convincing to me. So let's move on because there's more to be gotten in this awesome drum template. So let's now throw the two pans in, the instrument that I told you bef before that they sound actually quiet but have a really nice beefy sound. Um, so let's go to the two pan and I'm just gonna reserve the two pan for the really loud bit that we programmed. So I'm just gonna get these soft notes out. So we're just gonna not, we're not gonna use those. I just threw them away. Um, Let's just minimize these um, controller lanes here for a second so we see a little better uh, what goes on on top. And there are our notes. So let's now see what the range is because it, it, the two pen doesn't have that big dynamic range. And I definitely did not record it flams for this thing. So we found the highest note. I'm just going to make sure that we're set to quantize 16 for now and we freeze the quantize like I showed before and now I'm just going to copy this thing uh, to the other two pans and we're just going to check on every instrument what the loudest hit is. Can we go up? Apparently. Did I did that I did wrong. I gotta select them all. We got that one. 
we move on to the next two pen. I'm just going to hide the control channels for now. There we go, highest note. There we go, here again to the next one. Hide the controller lane so we see a little better what we're doing. That sounds great. Okay, so now let's just listen to the two pants. Just gonna solo these for now. And I can say, you know, I want this this note to be louder, so we get a, di a slightly different character in velocity switches as the other instruments that we did. And now I'm going to do the same randomization again on the quantize. So let's go a little further. Let's go to 16 so it gets a little messier. even moved it up to 18. That sounds good too. Okay, so let's now play this whole thing back with the other drums. So we're now talking at 1, 2, 3, 4, and 8 is 8. So we're talking about 12 drum instruments playing at the same time. Sounds pretty good to me, um, but we're not done yet. Um, let's now see um, if we can add some low effects uh, to this. So we, we're now getting into the the, the, uh, the, the the sound design department that I use a lot with uh, with um, with these drums, uh, which are uh, low hits or low sounds that I created myself. Um, this is one that I really, really like. It's really thumping and it's really low. I mean, your neighbors are not going to be happy with this if you have the speaker system that I have out here. Um, so let's um, let's give us some lead in time and and just like let's play this. So I just recorded a hit in. I, I only want to use it actually when the the the, the big section comes in. Just gonna move it over like that. Okay, and let's now see how that sounds all together. <laughs> Thank you for watching um, How to Program Drums with the Warner Brothers uh, drums that I created, especially for Mad Max Fury Road. And I hope you join me soon for another episode in this series.